Good morning and welcome to Friday. Uh, it has been a physical work week for <laughs> for Kevin and I. <laughs> um, rolling paint and fixing stuff and moving trash and cleaning and um, my back has let me know <laughs> every day that, that uh, it's a little different than sitting sitting at a yeah. desk and helping guests. It's, so big difference one is mental the other one is this is physical, physical. <laughs> thank you lord for this day that you've given us i pray yes, that you so just lord, bless this you, time Father. together lord that we might use it for your glory and for your honor help our words to lord encourage people to trust in you in jesus name amen amen, amen. we're in deuteronomy chapter five we're in verse number six and i think i'm going to talk briefly about just the six first six words we'll see how god moves <laughs> But I can tell you that uh, Deuteronomy uh, is a book that was mostly written by Moses. It is uh, a final declaration of a speech uh, affirming the Ten Commandments and the covenant that God had made with the children of Israel after they had left Egypt and after they had wandered in the wilderness and after they received the Ten Commandments and after they saw miracle upon miracle upon miracle of the hand of God. Um, as a closing speech, we have the book of Deuteronomy. Now, there are some, some Jewish people that uh, they spend their life memorizing this entire book. We have a hard time sometimes remembering a verse. Yeah. They want to remember this entire book. This is the fifth book in the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. <laughs> and I think I just inhaled a nap. A little coffee to wash that puppy down um this is what it says good morning good morning don or good afternoon mm. to the walkers this is what it says Thanks, you guys deuteronomy chapter 5 verse number 6 it says and i'm just going to read verse 6 and we'll take it from there i am the lord thy god which brought thee out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage I, I see <laughs> I see three things in the first six words and that is I am the Lord thy God Amen. there are three statements that are in those six words one God said I am Moses asked who do I get to say sent me who should i say sent me and he said tell them i am i am he uh <laughs> he's not the i was he's not the i will be god is i am constant constant Voice. in this world as we talked a little bit yesterday about the shifting sands of uh <laughs> our reality uh, we are finding out who has built their house upon the rock and who has built their houses upon sand um, you need to build your house on the rock and I am never ever changes he is the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob the God of Moses the God I am he is is I just want you to think about that those two words I am are a, a key that opens the door it's like saying in the beginning of Genesis where it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth if you don't believe in God then you you can stop right there at the first verse in this God says I am some people doubt God's existence I heard something the other day that I want to look up a little bit but it talked about the Latin the Latin definition of uh, agnostic which meant ignorant uh, that I don't know um, well you can know that God is this is what he said I am he's the Lord and he is our God there is an authority to the words that were spoken there Amen. there is a statement that you have to look into to understand 
who gave him the authority to make these rules and regulation? Well, he is the authority because he said, I am the Lord thy God. What an establishment to know that he is Lord. He's Lord over my life. He is Lord over my decisions. Uh, there is doctrinal teachings of something called Lordship Salvation. Uh, and it's kind of the opposite of what they call easy believism. Uh, and both of them you need to blend together um, to balance each other out because the law came and what happens if you can't keep the Ten Commandments I mean I, I asked yesterday is it so hard to just keep Ten Commandments I mean is it so hard not to kill people is it so hard not to, to, to lust and commit adultery is it so hard not to steal from somebody? Is it so hard to just tell the truth? Is it so hard to honor God? Is it so hard to honor your parents? These things, when we look at them in light of, of really what they are, may be more difficult sometimes for some people than we understand. But what happens when you break the law? What happens when you sin? What happens when you transgress? Well, the wages of sin are death. You get paid for sinning. In other words, the punishment, the judgment, the, 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 the repercussions of disobeying God are that you are going to die and you are going to perish without God. Sin will send you to hell because you have missed the mark. Mm -hmm. But it is a mark that is almost un unachievable. And that's where we have something that comes in that is called grace and mercy. Amen. You have to understand that he is, he is, he is the Lord and he is our God. We put our trust and our faith in God because God is a God who rewards those that diligently seek him. He is a God who gives wisdom to those who are looking for wisdom. He is a God who gives protection, for healing, provision. This is the God we serve, the God who has watched over the children of Israel, the God who watches even over a sparrow in a nest, who knows the very hairs upon your head. Yes. This is a God who in, in scripture, the children of Israel have a history of failing over and over and over and over, but God never, ever fails. Our faith and our trust in Jesus is what sees us through. If you are in the middle of turmoil in your life, if you are in the middle of problems, and this whole COVID thing has consumed you like like you're in a house that's on fire and you don't know how to get out and you're not crawling on the ground on your knees where the air is cleaner and you're suffocating our God can help you through prayer Jesus loves you God cares for you and he will see you through not only will he see you through but he will give you comfort during this time he will give you an assurance that it's going to be all right. You see, because if you know the end of the story, then you know it's just an exciting ride along the way. <laughs> because in the end, we win. Did you have that verse that there is, there yeah. is uh, Romans 8, number 1. If, if you're feeling condemned over Scripture, if you feel like you, you need to repent, then by all means, bow your head and ask God to forgive you of the things that you feel like you're doing wrong and ask him to help you to overcome them. Ask him to forgive you of your transgressions. Condemnation comes. I mean, but if for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But this is the condemnation that they didn't receive the son, that they don't, they don't want anything to do with Jesus. Then, then, then there is condemnation for those but this is what it says in Romans 8.1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. Isn't it time to walk after the Spirit? Isn't it time to walk after the Lord? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help those who are listening today to make a decision to really, Lord, get down on their knees and spend time praying and asking you, Lord, for the way out of this mess. Father, let us walk after you in the Spirit, led of you, full of the Holy Ghost, moving forward in God's anointing, God, in everything that we do. Lord, more than turn the light on at the end of the tunnel, we ask God for those that are in this situation that feel that they are sinking so deep that they're going to drown, I ask, Lord, that you would reach out and take them by the hand and lead them in the direction they need to be. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you this time. And Lord, we ask that you would anoint your word, Lord, and help the hearers to receive it. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Keep you a pray. What I have one thing. Oh, still in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 5.29. I thought your one thing was that. No. Um, but it, this, is, this is the Father's heart, just to show you. Okay, amen. he's giving the Ten Commandments. But this is in 529, verse 29 of Deuteronomy 5. It says, Oh, that there were such She's an heart. She's getting into my chapter. I'm not oh, just, there this yet. This is one verse. This is one I'm verse. I'm not there yet. She's it getting says, into my chapter. Oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. That is God's desire. He desires our heart. Why? Because he wants to bless us. He wants to be able to bless you. He wants to be able to bless me, bless our children. So that is why we keep a praise song in our heart. <laughs> and we rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> there was a bug in her coffee. It's okay. And again, I say rejoice. rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully without Blessings bugs in our coffee. <laughs>